Hello, my name is Jay Fast and I'm pastor at Harbert Community Church here in Southwest Michigan. I'm pleased to be able to share with you today from a reading of scripture for this beginning of a Lenten devotional series that's being sponsored by pastors of the River Valley Ministerial Association. Today I'll read and then we'll also hear from Reverend Peg Coring. She directs the Neighbor by Neighbor program in our area and she also meets monthly with pastors and the River Valley Ministerial Association when we share together in our monthly meetings. I'd like to read from Psalm 103 and then Reverend Coring will share a brief message related to this text and helping us to begin this season of Lent. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we are made, he remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass, they flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commands. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Striking, isn't it, to hear what Pastor Jay just read about Psalm 103.14. For he knows how we are made. He remembers that we are dust. What do we do with this scripture, particularly on Ash Wednesday? Traditionally, Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent, a season of humility, repentance, and prayer. How does Psalm 103 relate to Ash Wednesday and what we do as Christians? What is the calling of this scripture? Psalm 103 basically has two three themes. The first is one of God's blessing to us, and the second is a call for us to bless the Lord. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. In Psalm 103, we read how the Lord is merciful and gracious, giving us steadfast love and is compassionate towards us. There is a reminder of God's walking with us through history, 
God's grace and mercy showered on his people, and we too know that God has done much for us. He does not forget the oppressed, therefore take heart. He does not overlook a child, he never fails. So what do we do with Psalm 103 to set an intention for Lent? Psalm 103 suggests that Ash Wednesday is a time to stop, think about the many ways we're blessed and then turn these into blessings, these blessings into prayer and praise of God. Pastor Eugene Peterson said the word blessing is not a static word. It's filled with action. This Lenten practice is not focused on our eating, what we're eating, our behavior, or giving up something. Rather, it's a focus on blessing and praying. Where is it that you are inspired to bless the Lord? Do you joyfully celebrate Jesus when you're alone, in worship, with music, or like me, when I'm outside walking in nature? Go to that place where you remember Jesus and recall all of God's blessings to you and thank for those blessings. Look not only for the big blessings in your life, but also realize there are small things that are starting in your life. Many times these blessings have nothing to do with what we've done, but what God is doing in our lives. Where is God working in your life? Thank for all the blessings. After you have blessed the Lord, think about what you will do. Is there someone you can share how awesome God is in your life? Do you want to journal about what you're experiencing? Are you called to spend additional time with the Lord during Lent? Consider a practice of blessing the Lord during this Lenten season.